Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green. Steve Shanley from the Cedar Rapids Municipal Band, back for week number seven. Week number seven, Of yes. your nine-week season. Yes, always a good one. Week seven usually coincides with the jazz camp. That's so. right. So we are. You can't you can't tell looking at us right now if you're watching the video, but we're we're a little frazzled this week. But. That's okay. It's a good frazzled. <laughs> the, those uh, those middle school students always give me a burst of energy, and uh, and every year I I, I want to make sure that I can still do it. So right. uh, and and every year they it's always so fun to see their energy as some of them um, are discovering this music for the first time and improvising for the first time and and uh, yeah makes for a busy week with the with the jazz camp during the day and the and the municipal band in the evenings. But uh, like I said, we always always love week seven for that reason. Well, and the big payoff will come you know in two to four years when we get to see them in high school. And, exactly. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and a and few see, years after that when they're at the jazz festival. That's and then right. a few years after that when yeah. they come back. For, and see just how accomplished, you know, these, uh, you know, of course, you're a teacher. You this, you know, you, this has been your whole career. You meet a student when they're young and then you get to watch them get better and mature and uh, into a great player and a great person. But I don't think you ever get tired of that. You don't. And I will say, yes, I was very fortunate to to teach and work with students in the classroom setting at, at a school. But there is something for every student about leaving their comfort zone of their school and their you know, quote unquote normal teacher and going to one of these camps that is really much, I, I hate to say it, much more of a life changing experience in that way, just kind of getting them away maybe from either uh, all of their friends or maybe maybe just getting them away from that teacher or, you know, getting away from me and being at a camp with another teacher just helps spark some interest. So it's a, it's a really cool thing. I think the camp and, and, and the students meeting people from different schools and forging those relationships. And those relationships forever. last too. I mean, yeah. we often see students later on at things like the Corridor Jazz Project reconnect exactly uh, yeah. when they when they met in jazz band camp. Okay, so jazz band camp is going on, uh, but so is the municipal band. And what is on tap for this week? Packed week. We've got lots of guest soloists this week. Chris Haas, who uh, has been. Uh, in the area now for a little while and plays uh, with uh, Orchestra Iowa and uh, and lives in North Liberty and teaches. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful trumpet player. And one of those every, every few years, something just falls in my lap. And a few years ago, it was Chris Haas. Uh, and he came and subbed in the group, and I realized, oh, my goodness, he's really good. We're just going to go ahead and figure out a way to keep him involved uh, as much as we can. So he became a permanent member and uh, excited to feature him with the band uh, for this first time, and it's on a a Herbert Clark uh, piece, and he wrote lots of flashy cornet solos that have been sort of uh, borrowed by euphonium and, and trombone players over the years. Uh, for the Sousa band and, and played with the Sousa band. So uh, this is called Stars Under a Velvety Sky, which uh, Chris, I don't think, had played before, and, and I was not familiar with either, but uh, everyone's going to love it. It's, it's really cool. Very, very impressive. Shows off Chris's beautiful sound and technique nicely. And then uh, also I thought, okay, it's been, let's see, I've been doing this 12 years or 13 years now. I can uh, feature one of my own family members and not, uh, not feel like that's too bad from a nepotism standpoint. So my sister uh, plays piccolo in the band and um, is a wonderful piccolo player and lives over in central Iowa in the Des Moines area. And she was asked to play a solo with the Central Iowa Wind Symphony, which is a wonderful organization uh, over there, a a concert band, a little bit different model than ours. Uh, And she uh, asked me if I had any recommendations for a piece that would go together quickly to feature the piccolo. And I said, yep, I got a perfect one. I used it a few years ago, and they did that. And I thought, okay, well, if this other group that is conducted and run by someone who is not her brother asked her to play a feature, then I can I can do the same. So excited to feature her on a, on a cool piccolo polka that I think everyone's going to a, Love. a pickle. Wait a second. Piccolo I think you, polka. You may have buried the lead here. Yeah. A piccolo polka. There can't be that many piccolo polkas. 
Well, actually, there are. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Dennis it, showing his lack of it, knowledge it, about concert band repertoire. That's fine. I wouldn't have known that either. I, I think I had, I don't know, a couple just in our library that I was able to give her to choose from. But, uh, yeah, I think because the the piccolo has sort of a chirping bird type quality and it accompanies the happy dancing polka, but... Yeah, so this one is uh, French by Eugene Damare called La Merle Blanc. So, yes, it's uh, the piccolo it's a thing. polka. I, I, I think it's a thing. Yeah. I, maybe the flute players will correct me on this. <laughs> if I, but I'm, it, it seems like there are more polkas written for the piccolo than, for example, you know, the tuba to have the melody or the, or the trombone to have okay, the melody. Okay, good. All right. now, now you got me. I'll, I'll do some research. Uh, yeah, that, that, my, now I have learned something. During, so. during my uh, jazz camp <laughs> lunch uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Um, and then we have uh, the Young Artist Competition every spring, and this year, uh, as usual, an outstanding slate. Over 20 high school musicians auditioned, and uh, we had a couple runners up who are performing with the band, and we've got one of those this week, Christian Mockestead, who played uh, guitar in the North Corridor all-stars at the jazz festival wonderful guitar player but also a very very fine uh, percussionist and fine composer perform uh, wrote a piece that Aaron Nuss programmed uh, with the band when he was subbing for me during the first week of the municipal band season so uh, yeah Christian getting to show off in in the area uh, here this summer that he's the triple threat as a composer uh, and jazz guitar player, and then also a wonderful percussionist. So he's playing a flashy xylophone solo called Helter Skelter. Uh, is that the Helter Skelter that we know? It is not the Helter okay. Skelter that you and I know from, from okay. the White Album, no. <laughs> uh, <it's>, uh, <laughs> that, that would be... That would be an interesting concert band arrangement. It would. I'm not sure how that would work. But yeah, uh, there were... In the, in the early 1900s, there was uh, kind of like, I think, piccolo polkas. Uh, people realized that xylophone, short xylophone features were fun for the audience. So there's a number of those, and this, uh, this falls in that category. Uh, we've also got some music from Wicked, which I was kind of going through the library and realized we had never performed a medley of music from Wicked. And I don't know, is that still popular? Uh, yeah, I think it's, I, the music is still, the the music is still great. Yeah. Uh, So I thought, I don't know where they, where it stands in terms of touring shows or Broadway revivals or anything like that. Well, I'm kind of programming it as an experiment to see if any middle school or high school kids come up afterwards and say, thanks for playing that. That's, that's my favorite. You know, everybody, we performed Phantom of the Opera a a few weeks ago and everybody still knows that repertoire even though it, it's quite old so I'm I'm hopeful that people are still recognizing uh, Wicked the the piece that I am certain everyone is going to recognize however is the Raiders of the Lost Ark medley so that new uh, new Indiana Jones new movie Indiana it's time Jones. to trot out Raiders so, of the Lost so, Ark and you know me I don't need a lot of excuse to program some John Williams music so and that one is great and I encourage people we uh, rewatched this. My wife and I introduced the kids to it uh, a couple of weeks ago, and and uh, Marion's theme is so great. And I turned to her and I said, I I had totally forgotten about that, and that is in this medley. So you're going to hear the famous Raiders March, which is kind of in two parts. Interestingly, when John Williams played that for Spielberg at the piano, he said, Well, I've got this idea for a march for Indiana Jones and this idea for a march, and Spielberg loved them both. He said, I want them both. So they he uh, Williams combined the two. So you'll recognize both of those, but uh, listen for the for the Marion theme as well, the Marion Ravenwood theme, because that is absolutely wonderful. Where are we this week? We are at Cleveland Park, which we were at earlier this summer during week two and had a great crowd. We're in a slightly different location at Cleveland in front instead of kind of behind the school. So uh, check that out. That's going to work. You're going to love it. And we love being over in that part of the town. And then we will be at, uh, let me double check. I'm pretty sure it's Ellis. I should learn. No, we're at Beaver Park. So Good thing I checked, and I didn't drive uh, myself to the wrong park. <laughs> that would, so that be, would be embarrassing. Beaver Park on on the 23rd. And I should point out also, let me uh, double check this here. We have the um, Cedar Rapids Metro Youth Flute Ensemble joining us uh, before one of those concerts. And I am going to uh, avoid dead air right now as I load up my... Uh, 
Dropbox, and it looks like, yes, we've got the flute group on July 19. So they will be right before the Cleveland concert. And I thought that was nice to pair that with a with a concert where we're featuring a piccolo soloist as well. So uh, Busy week as always. And of course, the live stream on Facebook if uh, you can't make the concerts in person. Check us out on Facebook. That'll give you all the info you need. There's also some additional bonus info at crmuniband.org. All right, Steve, thanks for being here. Thanks, Dennis. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1030 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or your favorite podcast player. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.